Hello, viewer. Uh, this is Bud. So, uh, I could, um, this video, who knows what directions I, I could take that, you know, because it, it feels like a lot of things has happened uh, in just uh, 24 hours uh, since I made the last video. One is, uh, I have decided to use Qt browser now. <laughs> Vertical tab bar, excellent, uh, the perfect, uh, like, VI browser navigation, whatever you want to call that, it's it's amazingly good it's much better than pentadactyl and any other uh, because the whole browser is built around that concept uh, that's one thing uh, and I, I have learned a lot about uh, Qt web engine what that is um, how it relates to chromium and webkit uh, I could talk about that stuff about how Mozilla is the gnome of browser space. I could say I could say things like that. I could uh, talk about uh, Pale Moon, uh, and I could say that I believe in Andreas Kling. I know that I can say could say this because I just uh, recorded a, a, a video uh, where I said all of those things. It was about forty-five minutes long. Before that, I recorded a video that was about two hours long, where I went. Uh, really in depth on on this uh, browser engine stuff here and also showed uh, uh, some examples like the falcon browser and some other browsers i installed here um, let's see falcon otter browser is a different uh, qt web engine browser uh, mimicking the opera interface which also is the interface that vivaldi kind of mimics in in many ways Interesting projects, both uh, uh, Otter here and Falcon. I'm a bit. Um, I think Falcon is, is, is feels more stable. Let's just leave it at that. But they are both impressive, impressively fast and feels more lightweight than than the like GTK Chromium uh, um, Chromium browsers. And the reason is that uh, there is um, quite a big difference here. Uh, that's something I could talk about, and, and also like WebKit, what the, what that is, how it relates to, and the, the, about the browsers that exist that uses WebKit, and that none of them seem to work uh, correctly here, especially not if you want to use GTK2, since WebKit uh, 2 more or less demands GTK3, or all the browsers that uses that uses GTK3. And those who don't don't work well or at all. So I don't know. Uh, could talk about that. I could also talk about uh, what I've been doing this weekend uh, because I this weekend I spent the whole weekend. Th this might sound like an insane thing to do that only a crazy person would do, and you are not wrong at all if you think like that. Because that is exactly what this crazy person right here did, was backporting to Sublime Text 3 extensions to Sublime Text 2. Uh, and I kind of renamed them here and made my own versions of them because they became different things in, in, in some ways. Uh, and the extensions I backported, and I, I knew I if I'm going to use Sublime Text 2, I have to... Uh, make these extensions work because uh, I realized immediately they, they are completely ingrained in my workflow they are they are all just as important as tiling window managers if if I don't have a tiling window manager this, this sounds cringe but it actually is uh, after a couple of years using a tiling window manager it's like you 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 feel very crippled uh, if you don't have a tiling window manager um, it's uh, it's uh, th this is a more important thing. Both of those things are of course more important than a vertical tab bar, but that's another one of those things. And I I am, seem to have been uh, or I seem to be some kind of an expert collecting like these weird things that I that few people know ex even exist, and I. Um, start to depend on them. I, I have lots of these small computer hacks, you know, I also use 
back button for backspace. That's another thing that isn't enabled on any computer anywhere. And but the, uh, I I constantly press like the back button whenever I use someone else's computer or mouse and stuff like that. Um, but this this is this is as I said like the bi biggest thing it, it ever come uh, project management. So I can switch projects uh, with this menu here in Sublime. Uh, now I switch to the same project, but their project master. I go back here. I can also open any directory here, like say the bin directory, and then it adds that to the project tree here. And you see, all of this functionality just works here. I am using Sublime Text 2. This is actually the first time uh, this is uh, used in Sublime Text 2 because there are no extensions that do this on Sublime Text 2. Uh, and Sublime Text 2 itself have an extremely limited and very wonky implementation of their own project uh, functionality. It is there, of course, since I am using it, but it is more or less unusable because it's it's so bad. It's it's outright terrible. It's like uh, and in the API which you need when you write the plugins, there is no <laughs> API for the projects. So that's why I needed to, to write this plugin from scratch and do weird things like use x2 tool inside Python here to get the currently active window title because I realized that's the only way to figure out what the currently open project is, is looking in these parentheses here. It would make much more sense if there was something like uh, sublime.activewindow.active workspace or something like that, but there isn't. So you have to do something like that or there are some other weird techniques, but this is actually the, <laughs> the easiest and best way to do it. Um, also, when you are making plugins in Sublime Text 2, you are forced to write them against uh, Python 2.6, which is uh, like an unsupported version of Python, and soon they will drop support for uh, everything uh, that is not Python 3. Um, and it is kind of awkward and Python 2 is not nice, Python 3 is not nice either, but yeah, whatever. I, I'm not taking sides there in the Python. I I, I will say that uh, and I think it's very obvious now that I, I prefer GTK 2 uh, over GTK 3. But when it comes to Python, I, I think they are both crap uh, and probably a mistake altogether. But whatever they it's a fine language for this stuff kind of maybe not actually when i think about it because there i i stumbled upon a bug that i haven't fixed yet whatever let's not talk we could talk about that we could talk about this weird concept of strings that apparently python 2 has making it impossible to um crawl through a list of files if one of the files uh, uses uh, a different language kind of thing. I, I have still haven't figured out how that stuff works and it's very confusing when you read online what, what's uh, what. Uh, whatever. And it, it seems like they have improved it in Python 3 but not fixed it at all. And I am, when I, I have, I didn't know about this uh, till, till this weekend. But when I realized that, uh, that flaw in Python, which apparently is a very known flaw for, uh, in the Python community uh, and has always been, I'm amazed that this has become such a uh, center uh, program to have, especially in, in like, yeah, let's say Linux dis distributions. I, I think Python 3 now com comes bundled with, with Arch, for example, and, and it is more or less needed for a lot of, of like um, backend stuff and build system. Meson depends on Python. But when it have this flaw uh, regarding strings of, uh, for example, files, which is a list, uh, you can think of a list of files that is a list of unknown strings if you just hey give me a list of all the files in that directory and python will do that but it will kind of bork out if it encounters uh, uh, some weird text encryption in one of those file names which of course can happen in on a file system you don't know the files you are requesting before stuff like that you know 
uh, why 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 is that used uh, for file system operations uh, like a build system <laughs> I don't know whatever <laughs> I could talk about that a bit but I, I I don't think I will but that's what I did I implemented all this functionality here the uh, project switching the the so I can open open files with this thing and implemented. I, I actually copied a lot from from the Sublime Text three, but I also had to do a lot of research and hacking to to get this working on Python or Sublime Text two. But it does work now, and you can just add directories, any directory like this. It's it's beautiful. And um, as soon as I had done that. I was like, yeah, okay, next, I now I can use the text editor. B before I had this, I couldn't do that, and I, I knew I need to be able to use the text editor like this, otherwise I cannot do anything. I got that working. I said, okay, now it's time to fix Pale Moon, because I'm using GTK2, I have to use Pale Moon. I fixed the vertical tab bar, tried to upload the video to YouTube. It's completely borked out, uh, YouTube would... Studio doesn't work with Pale Moon, and I also why am I doing this? Maybe I should look into what uh, uh, Qt web and uh, or Qt uh, web browsers exist. And the Qt web browsers are much nicer than the GTK ones. Uh, even the Chromium-based Qt web browsers are, in my opinion, uh, in many ways superior to the GTK Chromium uh, uh, ones. So. Um, and uh, I learned a lot about this, why, why, what, what that is and how that works and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, for example, all of these browsers, Qt Browser, Falcon and Otter. Uh, I guess I mentioned that in the beginning of this video, right? That they are using this Qt web engine uh, uh, thing, which is a web browser widget kind of thing, similar to this is GTK2 with uh, GTK WebKit 1 widget. Uh, used to, to display the browser and this is fine this is actually ec excellent if you see here how fast it, it displays the different uh, uh, pages here because these are local uh, uh, html files uh, with a very simple css and stuff like that it's then webkit one here seems to be excellent for for these kinds of stuff but uh, if you want to write a web browser and there exists a lot of web browsers uh, that doesn't work anymore basically because they are using webkit uh, uh, one here gtk webkit one gtk webkit two exists works better still much crappier than than chromium uh, but they kind of work but some of them actually don't work especially not with modern web like new youtube and stuff like that uh, and they also all require gtk3 I haven't looked into if it is uh, the GTK WebKit that uh, requires GTK3 or if it is just how the applications are that they prefer GTK3. I, I don't know. I don't care. It still sucks. Even if it works, it sucks. Um, so you can either choose Firefox, Pale Moon, Chromium based GTK, Chromium based QT. And I think the best browser is Vivaldi. I still think so. It's it's like have the best feature set. It it supports uh, Chrome uh, uh, extensions, and uh, it have a interesting, unique UI uh, compared to the other browsers. It have a lot of extra features, like uh, picture in picture works nice and and stuff like that. And it's Chromium based, it's, it's fast, but it's also kind of weird. Uh, it, it, it's very obvious when you start to, to peek, peek under the hood of, of uh, Vivaldi uh, that it is uh, a, a, just a Chromium clone uh, where they have uh, thrown out some pieces of Chrome, but almost nothing else except the use of Chrome, but they have left all, almost everything else there. and. You, it, sometimes when you use Vivaldi you end up on, on like a Chrome setting page and you're not sure what kind of browser you're using anymore and you're not sure if these settings can you actually set these settings or do it, it it's super weird and it it, it feels kind of hackish because it is uh, while these browsers don't have any of that uh, it's it's like 
uh, they are much more just just the browser window and nothing else. A cute, cute browser here, for example. But you have some Chromium stuff, like for example, Dev Help is included in this, which is uh, no Dev Tools. Confusing myself because I have Dev Help open here. But the uh, Dev Tools is included in Qt uh, browser and the other uh, um, Qt uh, based browsers here. The reason for this, I don't remember anymore, did I mention this in the beginning? The reason for this is that they are not clones of uh, Chromium like Vivaldi is. Instead, they are independent uh, uh, Qt applications, uh, in quotation marks, I guess, when it comes to a Qt browser, because that's actually a, a Python front-end uh, on, on, on this one. Uh, but they implement uh, a web widget uh, providing uh, uh, the browser instead of being a whole uh, and then the web widget in turn is what is for what is the fork of, of the browser and that we uh, Qt web engine uh, widget thing is maintained by Qt for better and worse but it's at least a lot of highly skilled uh, 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 developers and programmers uh, maintaining it and uh, that actually gets paid and stuff like that and yeah sure Vivaldi also does that but I think uh, Qt is a much uh, more uh, uh, larger and, and richer company than, than Vivaldi for example. It, it feels a little bit more professional but it's also lacking like browser extensions it doesn't support chrome extensions it's instead you can only use like grease monkey uh, uh, javascript injection uh, with it which might be a big deal uh, when you want to make a competing browser and apparently google uh, sometimes uh, don't allow qt web engine based browsers to connect with uh, Google accounts, which is something that happened to me today. Uh, it is possible to spoof uh, the user agent and that may or may not work. Luckily for me, today it worked and as far as I understand, uh, one solution that other users uh, have found is to just wait a couple of hours and then it will work. It's super weird. Um, I am kind of fine with that, okay, whatever, I cannot use Google account for a couple of hours, okay, whatever, or maybe a day, maybe a week, but, you know, that's a no-go completely if you if you write a, a, a application, let's say you make a Qt application, and in that application you also want to have like a video conference uh, functionality, and that uh, video conference, since it uses Qt web engine, basically Chromium, it you could support any web-based video conference, and maybe the the users of the application could choose that themselves and use whatever they prefer, and blah blah blah. But you cannot really recommend them using Google, which is the most common, maybe question mark, maybe not, maybe it's Zoom. I don't know. I don't communicate with people, but you cannot use. Uh, reliably tell your customers of an application using Qt web engine that they can use Google accounts, which is a big deal when you think about it uh, from that perspective and in that kind of scenario, you know. And that is just because Google wants to mess with these guys. I think I, th I think it's just a sabotage that they are doing this because they could very well see that this is a Qt web engine uh, uh, trying to access uh, accounts and just accept that and allow that and but they don't uh, I, I, and of course i don't know here there there have to be talk uh, between qt and google uh, who knows how that works um, i could talk about that but do you know what i actually want to talk about it's kind of related to all of this stuff here it is gvim gtk vim uh, or I, I, I'm not sure if it's GNOME Vim or, or GTK Vim or whatever, but this is uh, Maybe we can see that somewhere can see about no, it, uh, Just about about Vim here, whatever Yeah, well whatever uh, G Vim is like a GTK interface for the Vim editor I don't know anything else about this. I just installed it, and this is the weird thing. I don't. I don't remember why. I was just about to go to bed. 
this was like two two in the morning uh, or two in the night yesterday just before i went to bed i was like oh, maybe i should install uh, uh, gvim from aur <laughs> i just did that okay uh, gvim gtk uh, to yes okay install install get everything and then install it open the window like this you know uh, so this Okay, whatever, now we don't see it, but saw that welcome screen, and then it just dawned on me. I, uh, as I explained before, I have made this uh, uh, project manager for Sublime plugins. So I have been in that world, in that state of mind for, for a couple of days. And knows uh, the ins and outs of how that works. And it is not that complicated. The Python scripts I showed you are about 200 lines of code each, and that is literally nothing, and that, not much more than that is needed. Uh, if you got uh, an API for, for like the UI displaying the lists and stuff like that. And as you might have uh, suspected here, I have all this GTK2 obsession and dev help and everything. And that is because I have actually made some experiments with GTK2. Uh, trying to write my own uh, file manager actually, uh, which is a story in itself. But I can show you just how it looks now. It's it, it's a work in progress. It 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 barely works here. But there is, I got something, and I, I learned a lot about uh, GTK. And it is uh, I I feel that it isn't that difficult to work with. It and it, it, it's starting to actually be a bit fun when you when you start understanding how how it works. And it's not that complicated. And there is good documentation and blah blah blah. So this is my file manager at the moment. It, as you can see, it it, it looks like crap, uh, but it's uh, GTK2. You can change uh, sort order here, ascending, descending by date, date by name. You can see the sort indicator here, which is uh, a BudLab uh, uh, trademark feature here, or it's not trademark, of course, but it, 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 that I implemented. Descending by name. You can change here, clicking name again, again, ascending by name. You can see the sort arrow. This means that you can identify the sort order uh, even if you uh, don't have any sort uh, or column headers, which would be the case if uh, this was icon view. I haven't implemented icon view, so that doesn't work. Also, um, like keyboard uh, combinations work, you can change them here in the menu, like every good uh, uh, um, GTK2 application, the best feature of GTK2, in my opinion. Like now, I can sort by name by just pressing Control one so Control one um, Also intend on uh, adding something like a command mode here, so you can you get, get a command box, uh, so you can, for example, open a different directory. I haven't implemented this yet. Uh, I haven't worked on this in, in about a week here since I got the computer. I've just been rising this and fixing with that. Uh, because I wanted to, to get everything set up and then my intention was to get back on working on this because this is what I've been doing. Um, also you can use uh, K, K and J here to navigate the list and of course in icon view you should also use uh, H and L and, and uh, it should be a lot more keyboard friendly and, and like a familiar Vim-like uh, interface, like Qt browser or or Pentadactyl and stuff like that, you know. But for a file browser, that's that's my goal, and also with some nice uh, features, unique features. Um, it's a uh, it's a passion project. It feels really good, and I think it will turn out a, a really cool little uh, pro program that I will use uh, for a long time. Uh, target audience. It's only me. I, I am the, the consumer of my own product, uh, which is the best, uh, in my opinion. Uh, when you are making something, especially when you will not get paid anything, why, why, why have anyone else <laughs> in mind, so to speak? Uh, but as you can see, I, I have learned uh, how to, to work with uh, GTK2. I guess I have the project here now. I've actually not opened this on this computer, but I migrated everything here. So here is the source code for, for uh, that. So I kind of know how this works, uh, how, how to set these things up. And when I opened GVIM, I also realized, because there are, even if I have implemented the, the, the project management functionality here to Sublime 2, it is still not 
perfect, you, but I cannot improve it anymore because there, since there is no API and there is no, uh, you cannot configure this sidebar in any way, which I would like. Uh, yeah, there are some things that could make this even better, quite a lot better actually, but you cannot do it in Sublime because it's <coughs> closed source and, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you could do something like this in GTK2, right? Uh, because it's it's not a com complicated UI uh, element at all. Sorry, my, my I got a really dry throat here because this is uh, the third uh, version of this video. I made um, two long ones uh, prior to this, whatever. <clears throat> I got some cold coffee here, maybe that helps. <clears throat> uh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's better. Um, so imagine this as a as a GTK two uh, um, widget kind of thing. I, I'm saying widget a lot here, but whatever. I think you understand what I mean when I say so. so let's open PCMN FM. It's a GTK two uh, application. Here we have a directory tree, and that is um, uh, just as in, in my file manager, or this file manager also, I don't have to open it there. If we change this to, so it have the same, how do you do that? Folder view mode, detail list view. Th this is the same as I had in my uh, uh, file manager, the same type of list here with columns and stuff like that. The thing is that they are, um, based on, on the same module. This tree and this uh, list here is, and even the icon view itself, uh, is in a way the same thing. So I kind of know how this works. And this is probably the, one of the most complicated uh, uh, components of GTK2 and GTK3 also, because it have the same concepts. Uh, and it more or less works the same way. You can very easily port this stuff to GTK3. But I am not interested in that at all. Uh, I will not do it. I will intentionally uh, make this uh, a GTK2 only thing. This thing that I'm talking about now, which is, of course, to take this uh, sublime text uh, uh, project thing and turn that into a GTK2 thing instead and add that to GVIM. So I get VIM with sublime projects sidebar thing. That's what I want to do. That is what this video, that was the goal of this video to tell you that I had this uh, epiphany about uh, how, what I want to do, what I want. Uh, I really want this. I think this might turn out amazing actually. And m maybe that, that will be the end of it. You know, I create that uh, editor uh, thing here. And I don't want to change anything in Vim itself. Also, let's see if we can open some files here. Uh, I wonder. I haven't. I have not done anything with this GVim. I've just opened this window and dreamed. <laughs> but let's see if we drag a file here. Does that work? Yes. Okay. If we drag one more file. Yeah, we got it. it opens and yes. Here you can see buffers. These are the different files. What I my, my first uh, project here will be to add this sidebar, and then add what's in Sublime. It's called the open files. You can see it here at the top of the sidebar. What this is is a vertical tab bar, isn't it? But it is completely useless in Sublime because with Sublime it scrolls this sidebar. It scrolls all the sidebar, even if these are two completely different things. The open files and the folders here, they, they are different things. This is the representation of the uh, uh, project and these are the files. This is one thing that I've always been annoyed by in, in Sublime, because it means this is completely useless and I usually just hide this section in Sublime. Uh, otherwise you could get rid of the tab bar and Vim here doesn't even have a tab concept. So that's the first thing I will implement. So to display this list, basically, what's uh, in, in the buffers menu here, just add these items in the sidebar as well to the top. 
and indicate which one is open. And when you click on it, it changes just like clicking a, a item here. And as you can hear, I, I have thought a bit about this. It, it shouldn't be a bigger deal than just uh, yeah, adding the same things here, using the same actions as clicking these and stuff like this. And they also have numbers here, I guess that indicates the position of the buffer then, I guess, whatever. I don't think this is a difficult thing to do at all. I think that that particular thing and just doing that, then you have a vertical tab bar in BIM. Implementing this thing, I don't think it's difficult either. I think it's quite easy to do this. I don't think it will take me that much time. Uh, probably a lot more time than I think I <laughs> will need now. Uh, they say that when you get IDs and plan projects and stuff like this, you should like double the time. And this is maybe even quadruple the time than I actually expect this to, to take. But I, actually, I, I think I know everything I need to do. I don't know exactly how to do them, but I know what I need to do. I know what I need to look up. I also, yeah, I, I got this. I got this, fam. And I want to do this. And that is also, I'm really mo motivated to doing this. I have had a hard time sleeping because I, I opened this window two o'clock in the night and then I got this idea. I was extremely tired. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, whatever, I have to sleep now. And then I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about uh, how cool this would be. Because then I can get rid of Sublime. I will get a better experience because what I like about Sublime is this basically, the project functionality. And, and I also like that it is not a terminal editor, so I can display a large font, but you can of course do that in, in this guy as well. Uh, so let's see if we can get the same uh, experience. Maybe the font rendering isn't as good as in the newest Sublime version, but it isn't t terrible. And I wonder if it isn't better here in GVIM than in Sublime Text 2. Not sure. It, it, if you can't tell, it probably doesn't matter, you know. But you can have different... Uh, we don't have the same font in the menu and we will not have the same font in, in the sidebar. It will have the UI font. It, it, this will be great. It will be great. Um, then I haven't really 100% decided exactly how, but this will be implemented, of course, so you can switch project with something like this. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm not sure if I will try to make uh, a, a copy of this quick panel thing here in Sublime, which you could do in, in GTK2. It's, uh, that is basically a, a combo box. I'm not sure now if I have any history here how this works. Yeah, something like this. This, this is the same thing, you know. It's not, it's not uh, difficult or complicated to do and have it have that being displayed like here. I think that would be nice. But you could also add that uh, this element directly into the sidebar. So maybe you have a, a text text box in the sidebar uh, with the currently active uh, um, project just like this. And if you start typing into that, then it displays the list, or maybe it replaces like in, uh, let's see, where is that, dev help. If you search for things, you know, something like this. And this uh, could be the tree view, could be displayed by default, like in GTK3. I actually think that is slightly uh, nicer in GTK3 dev help than this, but other otherwise the GTK2 version of dev help is a lot better, whatever, like every other GTK2 application. I'm, I'm not doing this for the memes, I'm doing this because uh, it, it's a smart thing to do and I'm a smart guy. Um, but something like this, you know, uh, for the project, the project list, like in Sublime, like this. Uh, I also really need this fe feature so if you would open a file in sublime uh, it opens that file or if you select a file here if you select a file that doesn't exist it creates that file and open opens it and i i i, I don't know but i think vim works the same way i have barely never done that but isn't it open and then let's say bash rc yeah no because this is not Bash RC. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know Vim. <laughs> but uh, something like that, you know, you can open a file. But if you would open a directory here, uh, I shouldn't open this, but if we open SID here, 
then it adds the directory. The reason I didn't want to add the, the TMP directory is because that contains like uh, 50 gigabytes of, of, of files. So we, we shouldn't add all that. Uh, but if you add a directory instead of a file, it adds it to the project. And I want this in uh, uh, Vim here as well. And this might be the only place where I might need to add uh, uh, functionality into the Vim. But I, I'm not sure how it works. If it's hooked up here to... Since you can open a file here, I guess then you get this guy. Um, since this works, um, I wonder if, if that isn't already hooked up for me. And then I can just test if the file that is being opened is a directory, if it is added to the... the, the the tree and yeah I, I have a feeling all of this will will be smooth sailing uh, but I have no idea I haven't looked into the source code of GVIM whatsoever I have no idea how it works uh, I hope it is just uh, uh, GTK uh, in C but it could actually be written in Ruby I have a fe fearing that is the case because when I install this it uh, pulled a bunch of Ruby dependencies it needed to build the application so uh, I don't know, but uh, this is possible. This can be done and this needs to be done and I will do it. That is what I wanted to say. I don't want to talk about the browsers or GTK or whatever. I, I wouldn't wanted to tell you about this amazing ID. Isn't it great? And another idea I had, because I, as I mentioned, I recorded that this is like the th take three of this. I made two uh, other, uh, the first one was two hours, so it, it just simply was too long. Uh, the other one uh, was a little bit too much uh, schizo posting and the conspiracy theories, so I didn't want to, to upload that. But the other one, uh, I, I extracted the audio and cleaned it up in Audacity. Yeah, I'm using Audacity, not Sneedacity. No, I'm using the latest version, the Spy. I don't, I don't care, I need the functionality, I don't have time. For, for to do that. At least I'm using the GTK2 version, so don't worry about that. There is no GTK3 on my system. Uh, but I cleaned up the audio and uh, listened to, to it there, and th then I realized that this, and probably this video also, that you are maybe watching now, are you watching this, or are you listening to it? Because I think that what I'm doing now, that works as a podcast, and I would rather do a podcast even if I get, I get it. It's it's kind of nice to see this, and when I oh, oh and GVM, and of course, but it, now it's kind of too late. I wanted to say this at the start. Why didn't I do that? But you should not have uh, watched this video. I hope you just listen to it, and I think it actually works. Uh, and if I have this, uh, if I know that I'm making a podcast, then I will also, of course, uh, try to explain uh, uh, the graphical parts more and i actually think that that will be that it will be a good podcast it will be something else um i would rather do that i might start doing that i don't know i don't know that's another idea I, that i just got today as you can see i am in a very good uh, creative zone right now i made the python uh, uh, plugins there i made this i made the file manager i i Got get these IDs. I this is I am in a good state right now. It feels good. Maybe it is because <laughs> uh, it is like summertime vacation time. Uh, and but a week from now it's back to reality. We'll see how happy I am then. But whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Uh, maybe maybe this is good. Yeah, I, I don't know. What I do know is that I will look into how to do this and I will really try to do it and I I actually think I will do it. And maybe you will not hear from me till that is done. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm Right now it feels good. It feels good to make a video, to record it, upload it, everything, blah, blah, whatever. But uh, there have, as you have noticed, I haven't uploaded anything. I haven't uploaded any videos. I, instead, I have spent a lot of time... Yeah, for myself here, programming, learning uh, new things and stuff instead. That have also been nice. I have missed uh, the, the content creation a, a bit. But at the same time, I never never get that um, 
urge to make to, to, to make a video or whatever. I'm not sure what it is. But I think this can also be uh, good for that. So maybe a podcast is better than nothing. So I'm sorry for, for every all the fans. And of course, we could make a video sometimes also. Maybe, I don't know, whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's not important. None of, none of this is important. But I know that I, what I want to do, top priority, is... Uh, project in GVIM and you also have to if, if you pay attention here I believe that this uh, can be used in with other text editors uh, more or less any other text editor even terminal editors and maybe I have no idea how it works here with GVIM how it uh, loads uh, Vim here b b uh, into this text view Maybe it's possible to, to use the same techniques to load other terminal-based text editors like Kakoon or, or uh, uh, Viz, for example. Maybe it isn't. I, I have no idea how it works. And, and, but even if you can't do that, it would be possible to use this project management thing. Especially if I go, that's, that's what uh, um, tells me that I should add all UI elements into the sidebar, into the same widget because then you could use that window that sidebar as a standalone window instead and you don't have to connect it to the text editor in any way the only thing you need to do you need is to know what file is opened in the text editor and even in terminal based text editors you can easily figure figure that out just as i did with sublime with the projects just looking at the window title and I think you can do that. I can add that feature into uh, the program itself, so you wouldn't need X2 tool or anything. So it, it it should be able to grab that. You should just tell it like what window class or whatever you you, you are uh, listening for. I think this this is a really cool thing. This is a very cool thing. And sure, I'm making this GTK2, and I intend on just doing that. Uh, I, I really don't want to make GTK3, but I actually don't think it's it, it's it's more or less uh, five minute uh, work to make something like what I imagine uh, work on GTK3. It might even be something that you can just compile both GTK2 and GTK3 more or less uh, uh, the same source because some some things with GDK uh, just work uh, across versions. Everything is not broken uh, uh, backwards compatibility stuff, you know. Quite a lot of things actually works across versions. So we'll see uh, what happens about that. But since I don't uh, allow GTK3 to be installed on my computer, it will be difficult for me to maintain something like that. But maybe someone else will, I don't know. But whatever, whatever. There is possibilities here. It's not just GVIM. Because I understand people don't like to use this. Or I don't understand why you would use terminal-based VIM instead of GVIM. But um, whatever. That is what I wanted to say. Now I have said it. I hope you have a great day. Now I'm going to go and get uh, a new keyboard uh, or a new uh, old. <laughs> we'll see how that works. It's a mechanical one, but it's supposed to be uh, with silencer. So maybe maybe I can use it while recording. We'll, we will see. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.